Hey there, Advanced Algebra. Sorry, you wanted me to wear a hat. I should just get my hat. Maybe I'll wear, I'll just wear the peace sprout today. Hey, I meant to get this out to you um, this weekend, but it didn't happen because of other priorities. So I'm getting it out to you right now, first thing. In this lecture, really, we're going to be, we're talking about logarithms, which are the inverse function of exponentials. But at the end of this, I'm going to, I, I want you to get all the properties of logarithms into your notes. Uh, that way you can refer to them, and then we'll do kind of a combined lesson 4.3, 4.4 together in class on Tuesday. So, um, again, we're going to write forms of exponential log logarithmic functions, and then evaluating them, graphing them, uh, and writing them out. So, one of the questions that often comes up with exponents and logarithms is how do you do these backwards? So, here's a little problem. How many times would you have to double one dollar before you had eight? And again, you can think of this as an exponential function. Okay, I start with one dollar. It doubles. How many times does that have to happen? Well, you'd say that would be two to the power three. Um, so you'd have to, to double the dollar three times in order to get eight. The real question is, is, when do you get into like really big numbers and you have a hard time doing these things in your head? This is when understanding how exponents and logarithms work, so you can evaluate them on calculators or computers or whatever you have. So, I better fix my hat. I just realized it's looking all goofy there. Oh, let me see here. I know. Riley was saying, Mr. Rising, your hat is just a little, little bit off. Is that better? Okay, that looks better. It looks more like rabbit ears. All right, how many times would you have to double $1 before it turned into 512? Well, what you're really doing... Um, in this situation is you're trying to figure out um, the power it takes to get to 512. And this operation uh, of going backwards, of finding the exponent, finding the number of times, is called a logarithm. And we're going to be using these for the rest of the chapter and the rest of your lives in order to figure out that number of compounding periods. So um, this is actually going to be a pretty quick uh, lecture, but you can rewrite an exponential equation as a logarithmic e equation and vice versa. Here's the form. So the base, of course the rules are, the base has to be greater than zero and not equal to one, to the power x equals a. Well, to write that as a logarithm, as an inverse, you'd say the log base b of a equals x. Be sure to get this absolutely 100% in your notes. The way you read this is, um, the log b of a equals x. So the log base of b of a is x. Notice that the log is the exponent, right? This value here is the exponent. Now, the shortcut mnemonic to remembering this is log brp, which I say is log burp, which means base result power. Again, that's base result power, log burp. So, what I want you to do here is write each exponential equation in logarithmic form. 3 to the 5th is 243. What's your base? Your base is 3, so you'd have log 3 of 243 equals 5. What is the power? 3 to what power gets you 243? So this one says the base is 25, the power is 1 half. Okay, so the log of 25, what's the result? The result is 5, should equal the power 1 half. Try these next 1, 2, 3 problems before I show you the answers. See if you can figure it out. Okay, let's see what you came up with. 10 to the 4th is 10,000, so the log 10, base 10 of 10,000 equals 4. 6 to the negative 1st is 1 sixth. Well, log base 6 uh, 1 sixth equals uh, negative 1. Come on in. And here's your other uh, answers. Take a look at these. Anything. Log of A uh, to the C equals base B. Um, the other way to do this is taking logarithmic functions and writing them as exponents. So let's see if you can do these backwards. Again, keep in mind what your base is. This is the result, and this is the power. So log 9 of 9 equals 1 is the same thing as 9 to the first equals 9. Go ahead, try these remaining four problems, and let's see how you do. All right, you're back. Let's see how it went. 
Uh, if you have any questions on these, let's talk about them on Tuesday. Um, and a logarithm is an exponent, so the rules of exponents also apply to logarithms. So you may have noticed the following properties in the last example, right? Anything uh, with its base to itself is 1, right? And that's a logarithm of base b. The other, the other one is the logarithm of 1 means the exponent is 0. So that's another uh, note to make sure you get into your notes for Tuesday. So a logarithm with base 10 is called a common log. So if you see something that just looks like log of 8 like this, which just says log of 8, if you don't see a little special base down there, you're, you are to assume that the base is indeed 10. Okay, so they want you to evaluate these using uh, mental math. So again, this means 10 to some power is 0.01. All right, 10 to what power is 0.01? Well, that would be to the negative second. See how that works? Hang on, if you need to slow down or, or pause, take a look at the example. Uh, try another one here. Log 5 of 125. All right, that means 5 to what power? Of course, that's 5 to the third. Um, so we've, we've been doing a lot of work with um, inverses. And again, a logarithmic function is the inverse of an exponential function. So what you're doing is you're switching the domain and range of the exponential function and the inverse function, and you're reflecting it over uh, the y equals x axis. And so take a look here. If you need to pause and read through this slide, I think it's a good idea. But this is the essential idea is, hey, if your function is y equals 2x, then the inverse is equal to uh, y equals log 2 of x. Take a look at this example here. Use the x values to graph the function and its inverse. So they're not saying make it a log, but what they want you to do is um, plug in these values, negative 2 into this function, negative 1, 0, etc., and you can graph that. So once you've graphed this and you figured this out, what I want you to do in your graph paper is now do the inverse. You don't have to come up with a log function, but just remember, what do we do when we um, do inverses? What's that, John? Right, you switch the x and y values. Go ahead and switch the x and y's and plot them, and let's see what you get. And here it is. When you switch those x and y values, of course, you get the inverse function right there. And that would be the log of base 1, 2, 5 of x. And notice the domain and the range uh, have switched. Just a couple more slides here, and then I'm going to let you go. On a calculator, you use the log key. So, um, and that is just base 10, and I'll, I'll show you how to convert, I blaze, I'll show you how to convert um, things from other bases to base 10. I just have one more example here, and this is an example in your book. Um, you might want to try this one out. It talks about hydrogen ion concentrations, and what you're trying to do is find the pH for each one. And there's a simple formula. So the pH formula for all of you scientists out there, Sadie, I'm talking to you, and, and Justin, is you take the opposite of the log, base 10, of the number of hydrogen ions. And when you evaluate that in your calculator, I mean, you simply plug it in just like this. There's no, nothing really fancy to it. Just plug it in like that, and you get your result. And therefore, milk has a pH of about 6.6. And uh, if you look at the other examples, tomato juice has about a pH of 4.5, and lemon juice uh, has a pH of 2.2. I hope um, this is somewhat helpful introducing you to logs. What I need for you on Tuesday is one, to take notes from this section, and then two, make sure you get the properties of logarithms from section 4.4. There's basically five tables in there, products, quotients, powers, inverse, and change of base. Um, and be sure to include examples. This will make Tuesday go so much faster. Hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you later.